Hi guys, it's time for our monthly painting tutorial and this time I'm so excited to share this super simple cloudy night sky tutorial with you that's perfect for a simple painting practice. But now let's jump right in and the first thing I did this time was to add some washi tape around this page so we can keep the edges a little bit more clean for this one. I personally like to use washi tape for this purpose because the glue in them is a bit gentler and it doesn't rip the paper that easily when we'll remove these tapes. The tools I'm using today are my watercolor sketchbook, these cup gouache paints and three different sizes of watercolor brushes. We'll only need a few colors for this painting and I started by choosing the colors for the background and added them to my painting palette here, which this time is one of our black dinner plates. But then let's move on to the actual painting process and we'll start with this dark gradient background, which will resemble the night sky. So what I did here is I mixed the colors I wanted for the very bottom and the very top of the painting. And then I just kind of laid them down here on the page so I know which two colors we're trying to blend together. I know it's a bit difficult to see the color difference in the footage here, especially when the paints are still wet, but I wanted the bottom part of this painting to be slightly lighter and have this almost greenish blue tone. You could of course go with even heavier color difference at home, but I chose to keep the background pretty dark this time so that the clouds and stars will really stand out. I know it's sometimes a bit of a struggle to create a seamless gradient like this, especially with gouache paints. I find it pretty difficult to create an opaque layer and get rid of all your brush strokes, but what I've discovered is that you often need much more paint than you might think in the beginning. Especially if you come from mainly using watercolors, I think the amount of paint you need to create an opaque layer might be a bit surprising. So I tried to use a very minimal amount of water to keep the paint very dark and thick, especially on the first layer. And then to get rid of some of those most noticeable brush strokes, I found that by dipping your brush very lightly in water and using super gentle pressure, you can start to kind of go over some of those strokes. And I thought this helped the paints melt together a little bit better. The background doesn't need to be perfect by any means though, because when we are done adding all the other stuff on top, you won't really notice all the small imperfections anymore. But when you have a somewhat even layer here, we'll let these first layers completely dry and come back to a nice matte finished background that we can start to work with. So now that our background is dry, the next step is to add those white stars to the sky and this is actually a very easy and fast step. All you need is a small brush that you want to dip in water first and then in white paint that you'll use to cover most of the brush with. Then we need another brush or pen or something like that that we'll use to tap this small brush and you can see how this will make the white paint fly everywhere, hopefully a little bit onto the page as well and not only on your desk and face. I think this is by far the easiest method to add some stars. It creates a very realistic look in my opinion because some of the dots are a little bit bigger and some are smaller. And if you want, you can always add some finishing touches with a white pen or with the same white wash. I decided to intensify some of the bigger dots here, but otherwise I didn't want to go overboard with the stars this time, so I kept the amount pretty minimal. But now that we have some stars here, we can move on to the cloud part. This is probably the most challenging part of this painting, but as you know, we are going to take it step by step, so all of you can definitely follow along. So first I just started by adding a few layers of these warm, orangey, pinky, red shapes. I mixed white, orange and red paint for this color and then played with the portions of them to create darker and lighter tones. Mm -hmm. 
So I wasn't being too careful here first, which is trying to create an opaque background for the clouds. Sometimes if we have a very dark color underneath as we do here, you'll need to layer the lighter colors on top quite heavily. So at this point, I kept these cloud shapes pretty round, but we're gonna break them and add some shading in a little bit. And then when this was done, I again let these first red layers dry completely before starting to add all the details on top. If you in any point experience the paint lifting and showing the dark color underneath, it's probably because you're trying to work on too wet background. So letting everything completely dry in between is very important when you're working with gouache paints. But then let's start with the cloud details. So I started to add some lighter tones, especially to the top parts of the clouds. And as I said earlier, I tried to create some almost fluffiness in here. So I didn't keep the shapes completely round this time. I was kind of using these tapping motions and I think this will help to add a little bit more realistic appearance to the clouds. Then I also added some darker tones to the lower parts and I even mixed some of those blue tones I still had on my palette to create even darker shades. But yeah, I think this is the part of the painting where you just keep adding those different tones until you think everything starts to look nicer. Every now and then I try to blend the different colors together a little bit with a clean brush and a bit of water so that the transitions between different tones here were a little bit smoother. Then in some point when we are not working with the edges so much anymore, I also decided to remove the washi tapes so we can see the whole picture and how everything looks like. Then before adding some final details to the clouds, I also decided to add this small crescent moon to the sky. You could use a white pen for this if you like, but I realized that it was much easier to just paint the moon with white gouache and this super thin brush. Then I actually used this same thinner brush to add some of those final details here and there. So I added some even lighter tones to the highest points of the clouds and then just added some more texture where I felt like it needed it. I was again using these tapping motions and trying to be very careful not to lift the paint too much from anywhere. You could decide to add more clouds or different tones in them, but I wanted to give this painting a little bit more on the minimal side. So after those final layers to the clouds, we are finally done with the whole painting. I think this was so fun to create and it also teaches you some basic skills like how to create a gradient background and work with blending in the cloud part. So I highly recommend you to try this out at home. This is also one of those paintings where you can completely change the color scheme and get a very different look in the end. So you could for example choose much lighter colors and create a day version of the same painting. 
But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick painting tutorial. If you're new here and would like to stay tuned for more art and journaling, subscribing is always highly appreciated. But I guess that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.